first question for Steph here on the left. How are you feeling after that pile up in the fourth quarter? Uh, I'll be all right. <clears throat> Excuse me. It was, uh, I got caught underneath the L. Obviously, uh, be some pain, but I'll be all right. Figure out how it feels tomorrow and get ready for uh, for Friday. Huh? Uh, same thing I did in Denver or uh, against Boston in the regular season, but I'll be uh, not not as bad. Anthony on the right. So foot sprain essentially. That's what it felt like, and then I'll see how it responds. So not much other to say. I don't feel like I'll miss a game though. So take advantage of these next forty-eight hours to get ready. Marcus. Marcus Thompson with the Athletic. Steph, you um, were getting kind of a, a lot of the shots you want third quarter. What, what changed in the fourth, and how were they able to uh, slow you guys down? We had some uh, forced turnovers the first couple of possessions of the fourth, and that obviously led to them getting some easy buckets, extending the lead a little bit. We settled down a little, uh, I think, a little bit after that and got some good shots. Um, they tried to send a little bit more attention to our pick and rolls. Um, uh, I think we could slow down just a little bit and try to find the right matchups, but that first two or three minutes kind of set the tone for the rest of the fourth. It gave them a little bit of a cushion and we had a hard time, you know, responding after that. So between the first three minutes of the fourth and the first 12 minutes of the game, that was pretty much it. Back left. Steph, Tim Kellogg on the athletic. Draymond did say in the pile that he heard you screaming. Was it just a lot of pain there? And how scary was that? Yeah, he's a big body, obviously. Uh, I haven't seen the play, so I don't know if it could have been avoided or not, but uh, I was in that situation uh, with Marcus back in in the Bay, and uh, you just want to get your foot out of there. That was all I was trying to trying to do at that point, knowing the position I was in. But uh, like I said, what it's not as for what I feel like it's not as bad. So hopefully it responds well over the next two days. Question on the right. Dan Feldman, NBC Sports. When Robert Williams is out there, how much does that affect what shots you can take, what passes you can make? I mean, we have, we've in our game plan. We have uh, we've talked about just being aware of where he is, because especially depending on who he's guarding, he can kind of come out of nowhere. Uh, there was a play in early in the fourth. I got by Grant Williams. I thought I had a you know daylight to get a shot up and underestimate how athletic he he was and how much he could uh, you know bother that shot. So there are situations where we can use that to our advantage because he's going to be aggressive. He's going to keep trying to make plays on the ball. You got to be aware of where he is because that's what he does for them on that end of the floor. Is that something you have to feel out game by game with his health, how much he can do and what you can do against it? No, it was after the first game, you kind of got a feel and then it's just a matter of can you execute or not? And can you make the right decisions every single time? You know, it's a bang, bang play, whether you're looking to get a shot off the rim or you got to swing it because he's, he's, uh, he's showing his length. David in the middle. Uh, David Aldridge, Athletic. Steph, um, you've heard over the years fans getting on Draymond for various things. What did you think of the chance tonight and the frequency of the chance? Par for the course. Every every arena, you kind of get a little something. It's been like that the whole playoffs, and every run we've made over the course of the that's he, he expects it. Um, so n no different tonight. Vince, Steph Vince Goodwill, the uh, Yahoo Sports. Was this one of those games when you start off early and you fall behind 10, 12 points? Did you feel like this was one of those games you had to hang around in, and maybe you could kind of steal it on the back end if you just stayed close enough and you know, in relation to that fall, do you feel like maybe there's a little recklessness there in that situation, considering it's the second time that's happened to you against them this season? 
I mean, the first question is you want to get off to a better start because you got to know that a really good team like Boston is, they're going to feed off of the change of venues and coming out with a lot of energy and aggression. And, you know, Jalen, uh, yeah, Jalen got off to a good start in, in the first quarter, made some tough shots, some ones we didn't really press up into his body. And we we paid the price for that over the course of the game because, you know, we, we clawed our way back, had a one-point lead at one point in the third quarter. And you do all that work to get back into it, but we feel like we can play a lot better um, with that same, you know, third quarter intensity where you're not on your heels for, you know, big parts of the game and don't have to, you know, win the game twice in a sense. So we got to correct that if we want to, you know, get game four. Um, I don't really have any comments on the other play. I haven't really seen it yet. I just know, you know, how it felt. Dan here in the middle. Uh, Steph, Dan Devine from The Ringer. When Clay was up here, he mentioned the fact that you've sort of been here before in 2015, down 2-1. Uh, I'm wondering if you see any similarities in terms of this Boston team, that Cavs team, the situations, the, the physicality in the series, uh, any parallels you can draw as you move forward trying to get back into the series? Nothing specific, just that the situation is what it is. We're on the road, we must win game, game four. We had a must win game after you know a tough, tough one in game one, and we got game two. So the flow, we still feel like we you know, obviously can win the series and we gotta come out with the right inten intensity and focus in game four. Um, but it, to Clay's point, it does help knowing we've been through a little bit of everything over these you know last eight years and can draw on that experience of showing up uh you know when it when it when we, when you need to to uh to stay in the series last question to kendra up front do you remember the last time you had just one free throw in a game and did tonight's celtics defense on you feel the same level of, of physical and just and tightness as it had through the first two games or different or more um uh, felt the same i mean their personnel and the way that they defend, they are very physical. They have uh, a way of, obviously, with Marcus on the ball, he's pretty aggressive. Uh, you know, Robert in, in behind the behind the play, and they got usually a lot of length and, and size on, on the wings. I don't know why it was only one free throw. Uh, I felt like there were a couple possessions that could have, or, or plays that could have gone my way. Uh, it is hard to understand the flow of the game based on some of the, you know the calls that went my way, where I have my, I have four and you know you're, you're having to defend a certain way because you know you want to stay on the floor and not allow that to impact the game. But um, you know you still got to find a way to be effective no matter how the game is being called, and it's a good lesson to learn for uh, for for next game. Thanks, Steph. Thank you.